My Furry Dog Mother LLC, who seeks a special permit under 531 of the zoning bylaws in order to operate a pet grooming business on the property located at 145 Washington Street in Reading, Massachusetts. Uh, a couple of housekeeping matters. Um, uh, we will, uh, we have in the file a copy of the certified abutters list that shows that you've complied with the, applic uh, the application requirements. Uh, all the local, uh, all the other related uh, boards and committees in town have been notified, as have similar boards and committees in surrounding uh, and abutting towns. And uh, I think uh, we've seen the cases similar to this before, and you've included some of those in your packet, but I think as we go through, we'd like to hear a little bit about what you'd like to do. So. Uh, actually, all the testimony taken by this board is under oath, so if either of you think you're going to give testimony, please raise your right hand. Everything you say today is going to be the truth, so hope you got the responses I do. I do. Okay. Um, your name and address and your petition, please. Uh, my name is Laurie Ann Chaka. I currently reside at 60 Cecil Street in Revere. I have been uh, working in Reading as a pet groomer for four years now. I currently rent a station in a salon similar to a hairdresser rents a chair. So I work for myself. I have my own clients separate from the salon. I'm not contacted through the salon. Everyone contacts me directly. Um, what makes me a little different than most of the grooming salons that are in the area, pet goes and so forth, is I groom strictly by appointment, which everyone does, but I only groom one client at a time, which most places have three, four, or five clients running around at a time when they're in cages and they're there all day and they work them in, you know, as they go. I'm strictly one client. They come in, they're groomed, start to finish, and they're done. Because most of my clients are what we call difficult dogs. They can't be around other dogs or they have issues at other grooming salons and people don't want them there. I practice what's called Reiki, which is, um, you know, energy work. And I specialize it with animals, so I have a lot of clients that come to me for that reason. And the environment that I create is very calm and relaxed, so that if they have had a difficult experience somewhere else, I'll take them. And I'll be able to get them to gain their trust so that they can have a more positive experience and still be able to get that service that they wouldn't be able to get somewhere else. And where I am right now, it's a very busy salon, and they're growing which is great for them, but it's very, very busy. And a lot of my clients are just, it's not good for them. So I've grown, I'm working by referrals. I have clients that are referring other people on a regular basis, so I need to grow as well. And it's taken me a good eight months to find a space and landlords who are accepting of you know, pet businesses. A lot of people don't want pets in their spaces. Um, and I've worked with a realtor here in, um, in Reading, Rick Nazaro, Colonial Manor, and we found the right landlord in the right space, so now it's just a matter of, you know, getting an approval to get the permit so that we can get open and get the business growing even more and service the clients that I have. Okay. Um, usually what we'll do is we'll have <coughs> the board members uh, ask questions if they have any. Um, we'll then open it to public comment, which likely will be shorter unless somebody shows up. <clears throat> um, before we get into that, I think I should put on the record. I have, I, I do recall seeing that you were notified that um, we're only sitting as a four-member mm -hmm. board tonight. Right. Yeah, I wasn't expecting mm -hmm. to speak tonight. I thought it was going to be open and continued, so uh, I'm just going to sit. So uh, I just want to make sure that you understand the legal ramifications of that. They may have already explained it to you at the town level, but I want to put it on the record for okay. the hearing. So as a five member sitting board, we have five members and one alternate member. So mm -hmm. at, at our capacity, we're here with, with six members. Uh, because we are, by statute, we're a five member board, we always need at least four members okay. to carry a vote. And so because there are only four members present tonight to hear your case, you need all four of us. Okay. It has to be a unanimous vote tonight. Okay. And I think the way that the town presented it to you was you could come in tonight and have it heard by the four of us. We could take a vote. You could 
take a shot that all four of us are going to uh, approve your application, or you could uh, cast your rod into a bigger pond and wait until a day when all of the members would be present, in which case you would only need at capacity four out of six people sitting on the board. Um, so because we're sitting as four of us tonight, you need all four of us mm -hmm. to vote unanimously in favor of your application for it to pass. Okay. Or you could uh, ask to continue to another date where there are, there are more than four of us, if you chose. I'm right. just laying out your They actually explained that there was only going to be three out of the five. They said there were need, I needed four out of five, and there's five members, and there was only going to be three here to come, and then it would be opened and continued. If so, we didn't have I was surprised least, that there was four. If we didn't have, you're right, if we didn't have at least four of us, we couldn't hear your case. Because okay. we have to have oh, at okay. least four of us to be able to hear okay. the case. And because there are only four of us here voting on your case, you right. need all four of us. Okay. So with that information, I, I thought I saw, and I was copied on some of the back and forth between yourself and mm -hmm. uh, daytime staff. And uh, you elected to come in mm -hmm. and have your case heard tonight. Yes. I just want to make sure we put it on the record that now you understand that you need all yes. four of us. You're still, you still want to move I forward tonight. Yes. OK, good. Yes. Only because I've my lease is expiring where I am. I'm trying to get into the new space. I'm trying to minimize any disruption in service for my clients and my business as possible. So. I understand, and that's yeah. your choice. Thank you. Uh, so now I'm going to turn it over to the other members of the board to see if they have any any uh, questions for you, and we'll start with Kathy. Sure. Um, just a little bit more about what you're going to be doing. So you're not going to be watching anyone's dogs, like not no. a daycare. No daycare. And no dogs are going to stay. Overnight. No, they're, they're from anywhere between, depending on the size of the dog, an hour to the bigger dogs, maybe three hours. They're done start to finish. As soon as they're done, they're called to get picked up. So, and there's no outside dog? They're not like outside? No, facility. no, no. And I don't take dogs early in the morning and they get to stay all day. No, okay. none of that. So it's strictly by appointment? You strictly by just appointment, you just my, yeah, and breaky work, okay. so the energy work. Um, but yeah, that's, that's it. So it's not crazy, it's not chaotic, it's not noisy, it's not, it's the one working on and they're done, they leave, the next one comes in. Okay. John. Um, are you looking to work with strictly dogs? I do have a few cat clients um, that come in usually at the end of the day when the dogs are done. Um, I don't usually take them during the, you know, in between dog appointments. If I have three dogs at the end of the day, the last appointment would be a cat if it needed nails trimmed or shaved. But that's it, just not you know exotic animals or anything like that, strictly just those type of pets. Okay, and uh, the hours of operation? Hours um, are between nine and six. And, that is and it's Tuesday through Saturday, so I'd be closed on Sundays and Mondays. And I see that you're in a business B district, um, and you did have a floor plan. Yes, I did. I have, I have a copy of it, too, if you need it. So the only thing I really need to put in are the tubs that I'll be washing the dogs in, and then just a little half wall for the entry, you know, something to separate so that the dogs stay in the grooming area or not. When the door opens, they're not allowed to run out. They're in safe zone. And you mentioned that you were only going to have one client? One at a time. And okay. I groom between four to six dogs in that time period. Depending, like I said, it depends on the size of the, you know, some dogs only take an hour, some dogs take three hours. So it depends on the size of the dog. But there's only one client there at a time. And um, are you talking about you being the only individual on site? I do have um, another individual that I did discuss with the landlord, um, someone who wants to rent a station for themselves. Um, so they did tell me that if that was something I was interested in, that would be worked into the lease as an option. But I, I'm not looking to have three, four groomers. No, that's not what I'm looking for myself, maybe one other person who's doing the exact same thing.
But that would be within the same uh, confines or, yes. or restrictions that you have exactly. already? Yes. Yes, they would not be allowed to room in a manner of the other type of shops, bringing in every hour a dog. No. If that's something that they would like to join me in doing, they would also learn, they would have to be someone who either knows Reiki or willing to learn Reiki to keep that calm environment and be doing business in the exact same manner. So that, that, that those are the only two clients that would be there at the same time. I'm not looking to have you know, a salon full of dogs running around and it needs to be calm and relaxed. Okay. Uh, let's go back to the actual location. Mm -hmm. uh, the outline that you have here, um, are you renting um, both areas? Um, That's the first floor of 145 Washington Street, and then above it is a 700 square foot um, one bedroom apartment. Oh. It was a nail salon, I believe, in the space, in that space before. Mm -hmm. Uh, the people who own it own the hair salon next door. But it's set up, the second floor is set up as a residential area. I believe so. Okay. Um, and the other question is, um, have you or the landlord or anybody uh, talked to the Board of Health agent? Uh, relative to a dog room business on um, one floor and above the floor a residential area? It was not mentioned to me, so I did not know that was something I should do. I don't know if the landlord has. Um, I'm, not, I'm not sure the status, but I was to understand that, that in the business B area there was only to be commercial entities in that particular uh, location, when I say location, we talked about this particular site being an address 145, mm -hmm. so it's difficult uh, uh, to break the two apart where um, I know that they did tell me that it was zoned commercial, so I don't know. The owner is a is a realtor, so that doesn't I don't, really I don't know. I mean, I don't. No, no. I mean, I don't. I would like to hope that she knows um, the correct zoning for the property she owns. Well, then I have. I'll put the. Uh, I'll put the status right there. I'll, I'll leave. I'll leave that and see what the other board members uh, have questions on. Okay. I do have a uh, concern about that. Uh, well, I'm looking at the table of uses for business and industrial districts. Um, so just to pick up on what John mentioned, um, residential uses under the current zoning bylaws that just went into effect um, are not permitted, but it might be, I think, what the gentleman uh, next to you would, uh, made reference to, which is a legal non-conforming. So they, they probably can, can be there. I guess the question is, how will this affect, you know, their tenancy there because right. they're going to be living over you know, mm -hmm. what could be you know a, a very loud environment even though it sounds like you know you've got uh, right. Reiki energy radiating yeah. through so hopefully it will be calm mm -hmm. and tranquil but I think that that might be you know what John is um, is driving at and then additionally because we did just revise the zoning bylaws I saw that um, you had included uh, prior decisions on this so thank you for that those were under the former bylaws, and I was going through the application here, and the, Glenn had mentioned that the um, uh, zoning didn't have any um, on-point you know, pet grooming, but I didn't know what the rest of the board thought about animal kennel, because that has a facility other than an animal hospital that is used for the boarding, breeding, raising, grooming, or training of two or more dogs and cats. So I don't know if that 
I mean, I, I would like to interpret it as we have historically done and not, mm -hmm. you know, you know, deviate from that, but I don't know how, I, don't, I didn't have my version of the old bylaws that these prior cases were decided under, so I, I just didn't have it to compare it, so I'm just going to throw that out there. Okay. Yeah, in, um, in, our, in the board's prior decisions, and one of them, uh, we have sort of a, a catch-all, which mm -hmm. is substantially similar to a by-right right use. Mm -hmm. And if we consider uh, a pet grooming business, because the grooming is part of the veterina uh, veterinary services section, I think what we've done in the prior decision, again, under the old, old version of the old version of the zoning bylaw, uh, was that we, the board decided that it was substantially similar. Mm -hmm. uh, use is substantially similar to a by right use uh, and granted a, a special permit on those uh, grounds. Um, let's see, and one of them, one of the decisions, 102B Main Street, uh, I don't see in that decision what district that's in, but I'm guessing 102B Main Street is probably business. Uh, and the other one was 143 Main Street. Uh, one was B1. I don't know about the other one. Kim, do you have I, I don't know. Because we don't get a map of the area, so it's, yeah. it's kind of hard. Right. Um, uh, but that we uh, acted similarly in that case in that uh, we took it under the consumer services and veterinary establishment services, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, using the substantially similar uh, sort of catch-all in the, in the past. Uh, <coughs> You know, John, I think, makes or has made a valid point regarding the mixed-use nature of that property. Um, but I think that's probably more the building owner's issue than a tenant's issue. I, you know, if you, you look at the new, new bylaws in uh, first table of principal uses, uh, in a, B, a B1 um, or any business B section, yeah. uh, residential uses are not um, you, uh, acceptable. So, I mean, <clears throat> somehow it would have to be resolved um, whether there can be residential use on the second floor, number one. That would be a building inspector's decision. But um, the concern that I have is when you mix the two, especially if you're talking about pet care, grooming, whatever. That puts a different uh, spin on it as far as the health agent goes. Mm -hmm. It's like saying, um, um, I guess the, the two are not necessarily compatible. Uh, and I don't know the health, health agency laws, bylaws, well enough to know if it is, if it is or is not. So I'd want to I'd want to be, have that question answered first, if this is an acceptable use as far as the health agent is concerned. Uh, before we, Because the other two situations were strictly commercial entities, commercial sites, they weren't mixed uses. Uh, and, and even though, I mean we're going, we seem to be going another step up the ladder of, of, of granting something in the question that comes to mind uh, is, is that um, a variance aspect of it for the residential? Um, or I, 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 I don't think you can separate the two. I think uh, if, if you have a site, the site has got to be used for something that was compatible. Downstairs was going to be used as a uh, insurance company. Um, in other words, walk-in, paperwork type of things. Uh, that would be one 
one compatible use, but when you're talking about pet grooming, I, I'd like to get kind of a statement from the health well, agent or whatever before I can make well, a decision. I mean, alternatively, uh, we might consider conditioning the board, this board's approval upon satisfactory approval by the health agent. Uh, Something to think about. Okay. Uh, are you going to be doing any any retail, selling any products at the site or anything? I, mean, I had considered it, but it's not um, not immediate. Okay. Um, I do have a couple of vendors who did ask me when I opened if I would carry some of their, you know, like the colognes or shampoos, um, to make those available to my clients. Um, or maybe, um, you know, like leashes, collars, things like that, so to have kind of a little small display with things like that on it. Right, so do you consider so it offering it, yes. retail? Um, where you might be entertaining having somebody else come in and share space with you. Mm -hmm. um, would that person have the same training and background as you? Yes. Yes, they would also be certified, and um, they would need to have the Reiki certification as well. Okay. Uh, and that would that be somebody that you just lease a chair to, like you know, salons, or somebody that you would hire? More than likely, would be someone that I would you know rent rent the station to. Yeah. Um, so that I would directly be responsible for an actual employee. Um, but they would have to have the same restrictions that you know that I do mm -hmm. as well if that's something that they wanted to do okay um, you know I, I do uh, I do understand that uh, that that your uh, your application which was denied by the building inspector which is why you're here mm -hmm. uh, presumes just because and again we're going the town has a chart, mm -hmm. a graph, uh, in its bylaw that uh, illustrates what uses are permitted uh, and not permitted in certain districts in town. Well, you're, you'll hear it until you're blue in the face. You're in the business B district. Okay. Uh, and as such, that is only a business and commercial district. And so uh, where the building is used in a commercial building is used or a portion of the building is being used in a, in a commercial district for residential use um, it does provide a health and safety issue perhaps I'm not suggesting that your business is right. not sanitary and that you don't <laughs> clean up after yourself but just by the nature of that business it's not an office it's not right. a you know an office use. Um, it's not just mere retail use. It's not a, you right. know, that there are um, perhaps concerns with the habit habitability mm -hmm. of the apartment above you with the use that you propose in the space. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the landlord may <laughs> not know that, that that's right. the case, uh, but I don't think they have a tenant in there right now. But I think it's vacant. I mean, apart from I mean uh, you know, I, I think we, I think we really would want to make sure that uh, that you don't run into a situation where, you know, and for your own mm -hmm. safety as well, where you're you're in a beef, if you will. Right. With someone you don't know who's trying to live mm -hmm. uh, in an apartment above where your place of business is. Um, so we want to make sure that you know it's not a constant struggle for you. Have you signed your lease yet? It. I do have a lease, but it's pending uh, approval. Of this okay. And so. Um, which is why they had asked me what my hours were going to be to make sure that I wasn't going to be there on a Sunday and not working late. She had, did go over some of those issues with me. All right. Um, 
you know, I'm not sure what the other board members feel. John, did you have do you have any more concerns other than those that you've? No, uh, the major one is is a mixed use where um, residency is not permitted in a in a business B area, yeah, but the mixture of the two, um, because of the um, for it's it's the some individuals are allergic to animals because of the fur. Mm -hmm. um, having that combination in a particular building um, I think falls back to the health agent um, whether they would permit that or not. Um, even if it were permitted at the present time it's not permitted um, business and residential in a business B district. So, and then we're looking at something that's substantially the same, but we still have that that issue uh, with the mixed use residential and, and veterinary or whatever. Uh, and I I would like a ruling from the, the health agent whether that is going to be a concern um, going forward, because if the individual, if the owner of the property decides to give you the lease and you're in there for any period of time mm -hmm. and then decides, oh, here's a uh, rental and I'm going to allow the residential rental above, technically they have to come back to the board, I would think, to, to get um, relief from that unless you had somebody in the town, such as the building inspector or some other agency that was willing to allow a um, residential use of the of the property on top of the commercial in the business area. Well, would we, would the board consider, again, I don't, I don't want to condition an approval on so many things that it makes the approval almost uh, a nullity, but uh, would we consider not only a condition that a health agent certifies that the use is allowable or acceptable, but also condition that the special permit is only uh, valid, and again, I'm not sure we've done this before, but I'm not saying we can't, only valid as long as the building remains in commercial use, meaning mm -hmm. as long as they don't use the second floor as a residential as a use. Residence, yeah. I and think I think that's a protection to the applicants as well. Absolutely. Um, because it, allow, it would allow her to operate her business, presuming the health agent thinks it's okay. So they put like an office, they rent it as office space or something. Correct. Else, yeah. As long as it's not used at, for residential purposes, mm -hmm. which technically is not allowed in that district. Mm -hmm. uh, but would we entertain or would that, well, let me ask you, John, would that allay your concerns if we, if we put it in, in, if we were to approve the application, if we were to institute those conditions that the, the application is, is, is approved so long as the health agent uh, approves the use and for so long as the entire premises uh, is used for purposes? Per Purposes permitted in business B. Uses permitted in business B, so it doesn't necessarily have to be you know, commercial. It could be business. Could be you know, business B. You can you can do a number of things. A number of things you can't do. You can do automotive repair in business B, but I'm not suggesting they're going to do that in the apartment above you. Right up here. Well, I wanted to open a small engine repair business on the second floor, and that's permissible. Permissible, as long as I don't, I don't, I don't think that I could have gasoline up there. But I mean, uh, <laughs> so the, is, the issue is that it's a, it, it was, it was a residential entity at one time. Uh, the zoning before they mixed it. Before they mixed it. Correct. The, the, the bylaws in the town decided to rezone, and in the rezoning aspect of it, you took 
um, a building that was not meant for a commercial use to be used for commercial mm -hmm. uses. And therefore, a lot of the restrictions in the, in the table are going back to that. But we're permitting, we're allowing something that is similar to, but not the same as. Well, and Eric made a good point earlier. Um, we actually don't know, as we sit here today, whether or not there is a legal non-conforming use upstairs. That's right. Uh, perhaps the some residential way. use was in place prior to, to it being considered a non-residential area. Um, in which case, it goes right back to the same issue. Um, which is what? the Water Health Correct. Agent issue. Correct. And so, um, I guess, well, I, I, I guess we'd have to put it to the applicant because, um, but for this residential issue, uh, we've permitted businesses similar to yours before under these circumstances. And uh, we could similarly vote to approve should the board decide that, approve your application, but condition it on certain things being true that we don't know are true. If either of them is false, your permit will fail. Which I would then have Perhaps. for another space. Well, so. if, you know, if we issue a decision on a permit with conditions and that permit fails, you're prohibited for two years. Two years two years from coming back. For any permit? For a permit for that use. Really? For that, for the subject matter that you've come before us to hear. It's the law. Wow. And so, uh, you know, I think, and again, just, I want to make sure you have not surprise and have every, mm -hmm. all the facts at your disposal to make an intelligent decision for your business. Um, alternatively, you could ask us not to vote today, go talk to the landlord, talk to the health agent, answer the questions that we would condition. Once you have those questions answered to your satisfaction, come back in, tell us what those answers are, or have something from the health agent, or something from the landlord that satisfies the board regarding those to potential conditions, at which time we would have that information before us and be able to make a better vote that perhaps doesn't include those conditions. Basically what we're asking you is, would you like to continue the subject matter of this hearing until the next appropriate date, which I think is November... November 5th? No, no, you wouldn't be able to get in for that. December 3rd. December 3rd? Um, I'll so, be business at that point. So right. I mean, so it's you know, so it's a you know, it's an unfortunate scenario in that we only meet once in November because of the holiday and town meeting, basically. Um, otherwise, we would meet twice a month and might be right. able to squeeze you in. Uh, but because of the notice, and, and I think we're booked up on the fifth as well. Um, the earliest you'd get back in after you answer those questions and you've already come to your decision, I think. But, so if you, if, if coming back is not a possibility for you, then we would ask, you would ask the board to vote today, uh, perhaps imposing uh, those two conditions upon your special permit application, presuming you get four votes that vote for that. Whoever's gonna make the motion will craft it as such. And I think we ought to, if we're gonna make that motion, I think we ought to put those conditions in it. Presuming that's approved by the board today, you still gotta get those two questions answered. Mm -hmm. And if they're not right. answered satisfactorily, then right. you're precluded from coming before us for two years. Okay. Um, but I understand. Okay, so is that what you... you know, can I ask a question? I'm, I'm sorry, sir. You'd have to be sworn I, okay. in if you're going to speak. Can I, can I ask sure. you to stand? Sure. Raise your right hand. 
testimony or, or discussion you're going to have today is the truth, the whole truth, so help you God? I do. I do. Okay. Um, as far as the, the mix, the property itself and the question about the residency, that was pre-existent before the people bought this building. There was a resident in the business. And uh, as, is your concern, I'm sorry, um, Mr. Mr. Chairman, um, is your concern that because it's a different business now, because it's a pet business and not an office business, that it might might interfere with the residency, or is it just because you changed the zoning and now you don't want it to be a mixed property? It's not supposed to be a mixed property, I, because I think they bought it thinking they would have a business and the rental up up on top. So that's why I'm kind of confused on what the issue is with the the zoning. You said it was changed. Does that mean they bought the building and now you? You change the zoning on them, or I I could not tell you when this was um, zoned. It could go back 20, 30 years. Okay. Um, and it was as as Eric had mentioned, uh, pre-existing nonconformity at the time that the zoning was imparted. But the unit upstairs is now vacant. Um, the 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 issue is is twofold. Number one, it's a combination. Um, it's the combination of a residency with a pet or a veterinary type of function. Veterinary type of function is is questionable because we're having to make a decision on it. It's similar to, um, but the other issue is can these two um, even ex coexist as far as the health agent is concerned, number one. Second question is, uh, does the it doesn't make any difference the the person who bought the property there is a section um, un, and that this is an understanding in real estate it's called caveat emptor means uh, buyer beware know what you're buying before you buy um, this particular is, this particular issue is can a residential uh, build a residential use be allowed uh, in this particular structure at this particular site. Okay. Uh, so there's a combination of things and I, I, I'm finding it very difficult to, to I guess to craft any kind of a motion in which you have questions to be answered because really, really what it does is it throws it back on the uh, responsibility of the town um, to take anything that may be coming forward. So if the realtor, if the owner of the property decides that they're going to rent anyways down the line, they've never informed anybody in town, there becomes an issue, becomes a liability for the town as well as you, uh, as well as the person who just signed the lease upstairs, so it becomes a major catastrophe. And then if the two don't cope, if the building, if the health agent says, I was never informed, I was never asked, uh, my opinion, then it was, then it's encumbered on the board to say, hey, why didn't you get that? In why didn't you guys get that information before you made the decision to allow this? So it, it, it I think she's comfortable with the, the health aspect of. I mean, it's but you're not a health agent. No, I mean, I. No, no, I mean waiting for. Waiting for yeah, the answer. To get from there. And, and so. Um, it's not part of the application whether or not a residence is being operated upstairs. Correct. We know that to be the case as part of what's been presented to us mm -hmm. tonight. Uh, so, uh, and we don't know anything about that use. And technically, that use is not before us as part of this application. However, I think um, we have an obligation from a health perspective to ensure that we're not running afoul of health and safety codes by letting an operation with live animals present operate if there is a residence going on, if there's a residence upstairs. So to, going back to what you said earlier, yeah, I mean, the people that bought the building probably had, you know, could have bought it before it changed. Right, right. And they may be within, well within their rights to use that upstairs as an apartment. 
the, that's the first part of the equation, if it's okay and allowable. Mm -hmm. The second part of that, e that equation is, is that residential use compatible with the dog grooming business downstairs from it, from a health and safety perspective. And that's something that, uh, you know, we'd want to at least give consideration to as part of our process. Um, so the, the, it sounds like the applicant wants us to vote. Like us to, to try to make a decision on the application. Um, I'll open it up to public comment and then close the public comment section. Um, and I think, uh, well, anybody else? John, Kathy, Eric, have anything else to perhaps add or any other questions that might inform the board as to which direction you think we ought to go? Maybe just narrow down a little the conditions that we're thinking of specifically. I know we had mentioned conditioned upon satisfactory approval by the Board of Health for mixed use. Was that? Well, I guess the first question I, is yeah, very difficult to craft. That's what like I. That. I'm, mm. yeah, I guess. The, I guess the first question is uh, conditioned upon a determination as to whether or not there is an allowable use in the apartment above. And again, that's tough because that's not before us today, no. but, mm -hmm. um, you know, I, again, I think we'd only be within our rights to grant the permit if, regardless of whether the use was legal, if, as long as that, I don't think we'd want to allow that use if that they were planning to use that as a residence. So, no. Even though they may have the legal right to use that upstairs okay. as a residence, right. I think perhaps they may be losing that right by allowing a, a commercial use pet grooming business that's not compatible with a residential use mm -hmm. to operate in that facility. So I think we need a determination from the health agent uh, whether or not that use would be compatible, the proposed use, the dog grooming business, would be compatible with the potential of a residential use above. And again, those have been all great questions to have time to ask and get answered before we made this determination. Again, I heard what you said earlier. Uh, so, it's, it's not usually pretty simple, but this is not. It is, yes. This is anything I wish I had known ahead of time, simple. you know. Yeah, I mean, I, you, know, I, I know, um, you know, I know, you know, I know you'd like to start your, you know, start your business. Unfortunately, um, even if we're able to craft the motion and get you the relief that you want today, it's going to take you a little while anyways to get those questions answered before you even would probably sign your lease. Uh, because you'd want to know that you can operate your business for certain right. uh, before you lock yourself into paying rent mm -hmm. uh, to the landlord. Um, and you'd be also potentially locking the landlord into not being able to rent the second floor as a residential unit, whether they are uh, uh, a nonconformity, uh, previous nonconformity ability in the first place because of the decision of the uh, health agent. Well, so it, 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 the, the, major problem, the major problem is that there are multiple conditions that have to, yeah. would have to be met. Um, I'm sitting with three other attorneys, so uh, I'm going to go with the three other attorneys, but the con major concern that I have is, is a board member. If there were no attorneys here, I would say absolutely not. I'm not comfortable with it because I don't know where we're heading. It's like going down a, a road and there's no light and there's a cliff somewhere down there. I don't want to fall off the cliff because I, as a board member, didn't get all the information by the time I made a decision. So I'm having to leave it up to the three attorneys to craft something that's going to say, Ah, there's a light somewhere down there that we're going to be able to see before we fall off that that cliff into the crevasse ahead of us. Um, yeah, it's 
not it's not easy but the applicant wants us to vote on something tonight so uh, we could well I mean I guess we could make a motion that includes no conditions and vote on that we could include we could make a motion that includes some conditions and vote on that um, you know but again you know you know we, we, we can we can vote you know we can vote specifically on the petition and make a motion up you know to vote up or down on the on the petition based upon the information that we have in front of us which is limited um, we could make a motion that imposes conditions that we're still not 100% sure what we want them to be but we had, we ought to give it a well, we ought to give it a we ought to give it a try to the best of our ability, uh, which may make the permit the relief that we gr we grant you ultimately worthless. Um, you know, because what if the land you go back to the landlord with this piece of paper and he says no? I, I you know, the other piece is is how long has it not been used? How long has it not been occupied? Because. If it's more than two years, it's gone anyways. Right. If, if it hasn't been occupied by a tenant upstairs for more than two years, the use, they lose the grandfather. It's not grandfather anymore. Yeah. Um, I think they just had a tenant in there. Okay. All right. Yeah. So, uh, so that's probably not yeah. an, an issue. Uh, but somebody want to take a, you know, I, th I think we've got to try to, to get this applicant a vote because they've asked us for one. She's asked us for one. So, any of the that other members want to give it a try? You want to take a crack at it? Why not? All right. <clears throat> and just to remind you, all four have to carry mm -hmm. it. Yeah. So you, you've heard kind of maybe where we stand. I'm going to throw something together here. If we vote and it goes your way, get this if not two years prohibited okay. All right. I move that the board approve the petitioners request for a special permit under section 5.3.1 of the zoning bylaws in order to operate a pet grooming business at the property located at 145 Washington Street Reading Mass the special permit is conditioned upon the following I'm gonna do the first three that we've done on the prior decisions mm -hmm. Pets will not be housed overnight at the premises. Petitioner will not operate a pet daycare at the location. Petitioner will not conduct any outdoor pet activity on site. Uh, furthermore, a uh, special permit is conditioned upon a satisfactory, a satisfactory approval by the health inspector for both the site and approved use of petitioner's special permit. Furthermore, conditioned upon the zoning enforcement officer making a determination that the residential use uh, in the second floor is an allowable use under the current zoning bylaws. And I'm going to leave out the portion about the remaining in effect uh, for the uh, permitted uses under business B, only because if the zoning enforcement officer finds that it's allowable. How could you have it be that? You couldn't have both. So that's my motion. All right, so residential use is allowable in connection, al along with a commercial use. Yeah. As long as the health inspector approves the site and, and the, the use, use. so and, and the zoning enforcement officer uh, finds that a residential use at the property is allowable mm -hmm. along with the proposed use that's right so that's what I've got I don't know if anyone wants to second that or maybe amend it a bit because it doesn't sound like it's lapsed. 
I mean, if they've just had somebody in there in the last right. six months. Right. So it's satisfactory approval on the health inspector. It's an allowable use for the site, the pet grooming. This, both the site, like the physical site, and the approved use. Okay. Both the location and what they're doing there have to be signed off by the health inspector. And the residential use is allowable. Yeah. He's designated uh, allows a residential use to have to occur to be in existence. Allows the residential use along with the proposed use by the applicant. So basically, what you're doing is you're putting it back into the building inspector's uh, domain because he's going to have to take the um, to sit the letter from the health inspector, number one, and then roll it into your whatever the condition was that these are compatible mm -hmm. um, options uh, for that building site or that particular not not the well. It's for the it's for the existing building, but it's really not the building. It's the site that we're talking about. So someone could burn it. I don't mean this. You're going to go in and burn it down and rebuild it. But if you rebuild it, it probably would not be rebuilt as a as a residential site. It would be a concrete building or whatever. And I guess we ought to add that the approval, <coughs> excuse me, is. Uh, citing to substan a use, subs although not called out in the bylaw, uh, use substantially similar to uh, retail services slash animal kennel. As was done in the previous As was done in our prior decisions, just to be consistent. Well, before anyone makes a second set, I will further add that the board further makes a finding that the proposed use shall be consistent with retail services slash animal kennel. And that way we'll actually have it on the record that that's what we did and put it in the decision. Well, you also understand that the board has 14 days to write this up. After the 14 days are up, um, for a period of 20, 20 days, there's an appeal process period that anybody can come in and appeal the decision. Uh, so you're talking about minimally a month mm -hmm. plus from now. Uh, and what will s possibly slow down the 14 days that uh, will be the decision from building inspector, okay. a health agent, and or any other town entity that may find that they wanted to come forward mm -hmm. I, and I say I don't know right. what that may yeah. be but I wouldn't want to exclude mm -hmm. anybody from that all right um, do we have a do we have a second for that motion I'll second the motion second by Kathy all right any further discussion uh, by board members I'm not comfortable however yeah. as I said I'm sitting with three attorneys and the three attorneys are telling me that this is going to be um, sealed in safety um, for the town, the applicant, and future uh, aspects of the uh, proposal. Um, so on that basis only will I, if uh, the rest of the board is of that opinion, would I vote in favor. Uh, hearing no further discussion. Uh, we'll call for a vote. All those in favor of the current motion, please raise your hand. Four zero zero. The motion carries. So, uh, I don't know if we've done you a favor or not, uh, or we've done right by you or not, but we uh, granted your application for a special permit. And, um, you know, I don't necessarily have anything to stamp for, but I guess I could stamp <laughs> the, uh, the application. No, the other thing you can stamp is, is the, uh, the floor plan that was submitted, 
which shows the area that they're using is this actually they're only using the first floor which includes this area. Well, uh, um, I would accept that has that wasn't included as an exhibit and referred to in the motion that we just granted. Normally we refer to a site plan or a drawing if we're uh, in our approval and we didn't. So I, I guess what I'll try to, what I'll do is can I ask you a question? Sure. So is it up to me to make sure that you get that information? Um, you don't have to get that information to us. You'll need to get that information to uh, the Community Services Department. So, okay. you know, your, your next steps will be, and uh, you, you don't have to wait for this decision to come out to start asking those questions. Okay. Well, that's why I'm saying, so who, who do I submit to once I have the well, information? I, 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 well, you would submit it back to... Um, Probably back to Glenn since he was, you know, you start with him, okay. and if he's not the right person, he'll, you know, get you to the right person, or if he's not around. I, I would start with the health agent, let him know your uh, situation, okay. and ask him his opinion first. Okay. Because Glenn's just going to refer you. Is there it. something you can send me so I know what exactly it is I'm needing to get? I can just send you his email and say, just contact him and tell okay. him about your, about your business and what they stated about the residential use. Is this something that helps? Okay. Is okay with? Right. I think there's specific questions you want answered. That's usually what she was it's asking. Up to you. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's just you want approval from. Can you put in writing that it's okay for me to? That my business yeah. is allowable right. in this mixed use building. Okay. You guys can correct me, but I, you will not have to come back here. Okay. You'll need that, I think, for your maybe your occupancy permit. Okay. Um, you know, I think that Glenn will mm -hmm. probably just want to make sure that he's got those taken care of in the file. Oh, but I you see. won't have to come back for it. Okay. Okay. Uh, you didn't get the motion prevailed. No, I did. You did. Uh, no, not no. the board. Okay. Um, yeah, but I'm not sure that the minutes have to reflect that. No, not, no, I'm not suggesting the minutes. I'm suggesting the actual, um, what the board voted on, which was the motion, and seconded in what they voted on. If we could get that to um, uh, Kim. Yeah, I'll write that yes. up right away. Okay. Yeah. Because usually, usually Maureen waits for the decision and then types that. I know, but this is different this is a reversal on this, okay, this whole process. Okay. Absolutely, you can get it to me and send it to you. I'll send it in the minutes. Okay. And and then yeah. so of then, course I'll send it out for comment. I'm sure that we'll have some exactly. Revisions. I mean, you could get a copy of that and okay. present that to the both the building inspector and okay. the um, the health health agent. Health health agent and your landlord. Right. Okay. Your landlord might have second thoughts about this. I'm going to call them as soon as I, I was hoping that they were going to be here tonight, but. Who owns the building? I'm sorry? Who, who, who's the landlord? Fabiano. Salon Fabiano. Okay. Uh, in the file, there's a uh, application for public hearing, and I'd probably stamp that. But I don't see it in our. <coughs> excuse me, in the packet, excuse me, of information that we got. Now, here we got that. <coughs> Pardon me. It's not in the uh, actual file? <coughs> no. Uh, so, I'm going to take the one in the file. I'm going to stamp that one. And that way, the file will contain a notation that we okay. granted your relief. Thank you. And that, then they'll attach the decision to that. Okay. Actually, you could include, in terms of stamping, um, the first, uh, I think, six pages of the actual application, because that includes everything. That, actually, seven pages, including the um, Definition of the case, the building inspectors, uh, rejection, no rejection, and the, um, the request by the applicant. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I stamped the, uh, the, the posting of the case and the application for public hearing, so I think that's, that's probably enough. I mean, the decision's going to rule the day. All right, I don't have anything to, to give you okay. to, to take away. Uh, with you today, um, but uh, you would do well to keep in touch with the town boards and departments that we've 
recommended okay. you to get in touch with. Uh, and uh, thank you for your patience while we got through that normally. Thank you, I appreciate it, uh, I really do. It would be, an, it, typically it's an easy task without that wrinkle. Mm -hmm. uh, that made it more difficult than we, we, we try. Well, I'm get, glad that I it mentioned right. it and, you know, had I not, you wouldn't have known and then what if something had happened down the road? Right, so. right. Uh, so with that, I'll, I'll close the hearing and Again, thank you for your time thank you. and your patience, uh, and I wish you the best of luck. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you all very much. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Have a good night. The only other uh, matter on our agenda tonight is some prior minutes from the September 17th hearing. major minor application. have a chance to look at them. Mm -hmm. Anybody want to make a motion? Move to approve the minutes. Dated September 17th, 2015. We have a second. A second. John? Discussion? All those in favor? 4-0-0. Any other motions we want to make? to adjourn. Sure. I'll second that. Kathy second. All in favor? 4 zero, zero. We are adjourned. Thanks, everybody. So we have a third case then.